Well, good morning. Today in this video, I'm going to make a decorative display piece. And this is one of the pieces I made many years ago. The one I'm going to do today is going to be square. I'm going to do a little coloring and texturing. I'm just not sure. Now I get my inspiration for this kind of artwork from Nick Agar. I love his work. Not to copy him, but maybe to get some ideas and inspiration. So let me readjust my camera and I'll show you what I'm going to do today. Okay, now here I am at my radial arm saw. And I'm going to make this project today out of this nice two inch thick ash. However, I'm not actually going to mill this right now because I don't want to make a big dust cloud in my shop. And anyway, that's not the point of the video. I'm making a decorative display piece and I'm going to highlight different techniques that I use. Metal leaf perhaps, uh, maybe some metal reactive paint. We'll see about that later. So let me just show you how I would cut this. Now this board measures about eight and three quarter inches. And I have a stop block right here clamped to my fence. And I'm gonna cut this at the same dimension. I want this to be perfectly square. So I've got that marked. I'm gonna cut it. However, I'm not really gonna cut it. I'm gonna take you to the next step after I cut this board and show you what I'm doing. Now I'm going to make one more comment before I move on. I've got my radial arm saw set up so I can do a push cut on this. Ordinarily the radial arm saw is sitting inside here and it can be cut with a pull cut, but you're not cutting against the rotation of the blade. Here you are. And I find this a much better way to do this. I'm not going to cut it right now, but let me show you the end result. Okay, you're looking at the board I cut yesterday. Let me take you over to my bandsaw and we'll do the next operation. Okay, so the next operation was to take this board, this two inch thick ash board, and cut it in half. I really felt starting with that thickness was a little too much, and I can make two pieces out of this. And again, I'm not showing you this, I ripped it on my bandsaw, and I did all this yesterday. Now the next step is to mount this, and it's always a concern for safety. So let me show you what I'm planning. Now I very carefully made this piece of wood as square as possible. Okay, and then the next thing I did was I marked the center line. I went from corner to corner in two directions. And the next thing I need to do, I need to think about a way to check this up. So I've got a block of plywood, three-quarter inch plywood, and I'm going to line these points up with the lines on my ash board. And again, I'm just dealing with half of that, so it's uh, probably a good inch thick, and that's a good thickness, I think, to start with. So I'm going to line that up. and attach that. I'm going to use double stick tape, then I'm going to do hot melt glue around the edge of that. I don't want to cut into this. I could use a screw chuck, but then I'd have a hole in this. The other thing I did was I took a marking gauge and I marked around the perimeter of this all the way around and that would help me line up my little piece of walnut plywood. This is a tool I made many years ago. I made this at a Purple Heart. 
I've got a threaded insert in that. I've got a little brass um, piece in there. And this is from my woodworking days, making cabinets and such. So anyway, let's move on. Enough of that. The next step is to attach this, and I can use a screw chuck on this piece of plywood. Now I have my two display pieces temporarily joined to the waste block that I'm going to have uh, for my screw chuck later on. I've just got that uh, attached with some hot milk glue. And I figured out that if I put a hole through here with the drill, small drill bit, right through the center, I can line that up later on with my double stick tape. And I've got this uh, adjusted so it goes into my display piece right here about an eighth of an inch. So let me just go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and drill my other piece while I'm at it. Line that up. So I can line that up with a nail right there, and I could actually use the same drill bit. So later on, I'm going to take this apart and uh, attach it a little bit more firmly with some double stick tape, and then I'll put some more hot melt glue around there and that should be sufficient to safely hold that display piece on. Okay, now I have my waste block, which is uh, walnut plywood. I've got it upside down and I've got it started with a little double stick tape. I've got my nail in there, I've got that lined up, and I've also added a little block to help me register this when I flip it over and put it on the, the display piece I'm going to actually use. Alright, a little bit more here. Now I've got a couple marks right here and a couple marks on my waste block. I'm going to line that up and uh, okay I've got that lightly on there. I'm, I'm going to line up my, my points, and there's the, the hole. So now I can just put a little pressure on this and tap that down. Okay, I'm going to take this off, maybe. Now I've got my points lined up fairly well. And I'm not sure how important that is, but I think as far as getting this centered, I think it's uh, worth the effort. So anyway, the next thing to do is think about where I'm going to drill holes here when I actually turn this piece. I can have a center hole, which is important because you need to have that um, on there. I'm not sure about putting uh, any kind of a tenon or expansion recess in this. So the next step is to go over to the lathe do a little bit of churning on this. Okay, now in this video, I'm going to be working on two display pieces. I'm going to show you a close-up in just a second. I've got my waste block on the back of this. I've got this particular piece uh, chucked up with a screw chuck, and I'll show you when I take this off how I do that. So, now let me do just a little bit of cleanup on the front of this. It's still kind of rough from the bandsaw, and I'm going to just smooth this out and think about a design.
Okay, now as I proceed with this project, I'm going to have my tail stock up probably 100% of the time. I'm just not sure where I'm going to be at the very end of this project. I may remove it just to take off a little nub or something at the center there, but I think I can do this with the tailstock support and I think that's a safe way to go. So I'm going to continue cleaning this up. Now you have to be really careful with something like this spinning around on your lathe and here I am using a scraper but I'm turning left handed and I think this is a safer option when you're turning something like this. Uh, later on I'm going to show you a close up of this tool and I'm just trying to level off the surface and get a very nice finish on that surface so I can add some embellishments as we go along here. Okay, now it's time for a little design consideration on this. First of all, the most obvious thing to do would be uh, in this orientation. This is held in a true center. The most obvious thing would be to just somehow make a groove in there or maybe a little shallow bowl feature right in the center. Now, as that is really the obvious uh, choice, I think I will avoid that. I think I'll do everything off-center. So, one thing you can do is, I've got a, a compass here. I'm going to just uh, pick a place along this line. I've got the center marked on that. And I'm going to open this up to a place where I'm off the board. Okay, so let's let's go from here around. And I like that. So on the other side, I'll put a screw hole right in this area on the back side. Now another consideration is I've got a Powermatic with a 20-inch swing. So from this point to any point um, around the edge here, I can't be more than 10 inches. So here's my center point right here that I just used. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to measure that. So I'm from here to here, I'm 7 inches, so I'm okay. I'll still have enough swing on that. So you got to be careful about that. If I put my center point too far out here, it's going to hit my bedways. So that's how I'm going to determine the design as far as being off-center and making features along there and that's the next step. So I'm going to lock my headstock and remove my display piece. This is a dedicated screw chuck and I've got the right drill bit size for this and I can always go back to that true center but what I'm going to do as I showed you before is I'm going to find this this place right here, and I can kind of measure that, see where that's at, and drill a hole in the back. And that's the first thing I'll do as far as a design feature, turning this off center. Okay, I've drilled a couple holes. While I was at the drill press, I drilled this hole that I talked about before, and I also drilled another hole here. And I made sure that the distance from this hole to the corner wasn't more than 10 inches. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this orientation on my screw chuck. We'll tighten that down. Okay, make sure that's good and tight. Now I guarantee you I'm going to have my face shield on and I'm going to have my tail stock up for support through this entire operation. Okay, I'm not uh, hitting anything. Okay, now it's a good idea to mark this out with a pencil. You can always change your mind 
before you take a tool and make a cut. So I've got this marked on a piece of uh, masking tape right here. And I think that's where I want that. So I'm going to be I'm going to be off the piece right here and back on there. And I might move that line in just just a little bit. So when that piece of wood is spinning, I can put my tool on there and it'll be in the right location. And I'm going to take a narrow parting tool and use that tool to mark that. And I can go back over it with another tool if I want to. I've also got my remote switch hooked up right here so I don't have to reach across my, my piece as it's spinning. Now I'm turning the lathe about 500 RPM, not real fast. So I like that. It's just nipping the corner right here. So I'm going to take a bowl gouge and make a little detail in there. I've got a little quarter inch bowl gouge I'm going to use. Take a look at that. Okay. Now with the point tool, I'm going to make another element right here. Now as I begin to make this detail with my point tool, you'll see I'm turning left-handed. This adds another element of safety it just puts my hands in a better position to make this cut. And also that switch is really nice because I don't have to reach over the spinning piece of wood. Okay, now what I plan to do in this area right here is a little bit of pyography. I use my burner and make a little bit of design in there. Okay, now I'm taking a small piece of wood. This is probably alder. And I've already done a little burning on this. I'm going to just hold this in this groove. All right, now I like that. I got a little bit of smoke off that. I'm not sure if you could see that. Now what I have planned for the very center of this is I'm going to use a little bit of my metal reactive paint in there. Now one of the things you can do is you can coat this surface with a color that isn't really related to the metal reactive paint and then you can apply that over the top of it. Uh, so if you pick red, blue, black, whatever, you'll see a little bit of that color coming through. So I think I'm going to start with white right here. Now this video could be three or four hours long, so I'll probably do some things and just show you what I've ended up with after I've applied that uh, technique. Now I've got two of these decorative display pieces I'm going to be working on, so I'm going to kind of go back and forth and show you as many different techniques as possible. I have this straight off my bandsaw, and I thought, you know, it might be kind of neat just to leave that texture on there. Texture, uh, in this case, straight from a saw blade is another technique you can use. So I've got this way off center, and I've got a piece of chalk, which is a good way to uh, mark a line on there because it comes off fairly easily. I may not want to sand this, after I get done. So I can just take a brush and, and remove that chalk. So I'm going to turn this on very slowly. 
just make a mark with my chalk. All right, I had to get another color that would show up a little bit better on there. So I can uh, take a tool and make a little detail on that, which I think I will do right now. Now I'm taking a scraping tool and I'm going to clean that up. It's a little bit rough. All right, I think that'll be pretty cool. All right, with my lathe stationary, I'm going to do a little bit of sanding on this detail. All right, I'm still working on my second display piece. I've got a circle or a ring in one corner up here. Got a little bit of texture in a couple different places. I've applied a little bit of color with a marker. And this surface is really rough. And I like this area right here. And I may expand that. I'm not sure. I can always go back to it. Now, I'm going to show you another one of my favorite techniques. And I'm going to go over to the drill press and show you. Okay, let me give you a little bit of a rundown here. I'm at my drill press. And I have a plug cutter chucked up into my drill press. Um, I'm showing you the back side of this. And I've got a number of holes drilled in there. I'm not necessarily going to use all of them, but I thought I'd just drill them while I was there. So I'm just taking my drill press and making an indentation with this plug cutter. Now I've got the stop set on my drill press just a little bit below the surface, maybe a couple millimeters. So I make somewhat of an indentation in this ash. It's proving to be a little bit difficult, but it's okay. I'd probably be better off with a wood that wasn't quite so ring porous. Maybe even a hard maple. But I like this ash. It's uh, got some texture and color to it. And I just go all the way around this ring here, make an impression. I'm just kind of eyeballing this. There's no great formula. I'm certainly not going to measure this. And then I'll show you the next step that I do. And the next device I'm going to put in there is a center finder or a center drill. It's kind of a machinist tool. And I like the profile on this. You can use whatever you want. You can uh, bash this in with a hammer. You can use a Phillips drill bit or something like that. Anything you have around the shop that will make an impression works pretty well. So I'm just adjusting this so it goes beneath the surface a little bit. I'll work on this a little bit and then I'll show you the final end result of this. And after I'm all done, I'm going to put a little bit of gilt cream on that and it's going to highlight that uh, very nicely. seven minutes of footage and reduced it way down. Here I am showing you a quarter inch bowl gouge. I make a little detail in this particular piece. I'm pointing my finger at an area that I'm going to color in just a second with some acrylic paint. And you'll understand after you watch this a little bit why I am not showing you a lot of this decorating because it isn't all that exciting. Now, my first instinct is to paint this 
with the piece spinning. It's not a good idea. <laughs> it's a little bit sloppy and uh, I have to do quite a bit of cleanup later on. But I forge ahead. However, eventually I just simply stop the lathe and apply it with the lathe stopped and I'm just spinning that by hand. Now another point I'll make right now is if you look at this piece in its finished condition, I take this color away as well. I paint over it because I thought this would uh, work, but I really didn't like it. So uh, I take this away and I think I end up with black. I'm not sure. I can't remember, but anyway, this is a little bit like watching that old paint dry. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of uh, black printer ink that I had left over from an old printer and it really works pretty good. It's very, very um, black obviously, but it works really well. And I'm just applying this with a Q-tip and that does work um, okay. And again, I'm just applying that with the lathe off and I'm just rotating that by hand. Now it's very hard to keep that in the groove and I do quite a bit of sanding on that and clean it up later on. So there it is, up to this point anyway, and I have a lot of work left to do on this particular piece. Well, this particular piece is completed except maybe for a clear finish after my paint dries. I applied some color by way of my airbrush and I'm very happy with this. I like the color combination. I blended in some um, yellow and red and there's a little bit of turquoise in some places. Yeah, and I think one of the main questions is, is it best displayed like this, like this. <laughs> anyway, I'm still working on my other piece and I will show you that when I get a little bit more um, finished on that second piece. And I'll show you another view right here of my little animal tracks, whatever they may be on the edge of that. Well, I have been going back and forth working on several of these decorative display pieces, uh, applying a little bit of uh, color or texturing to each one of them. So I'm going to go back and forth. I'm going to be kind of all over the map on these, but you'll get the idea. Now, I'm not going to show you a lot of footage doing these particular little techniques. I've got videos on coloring and texturing and um, you can probably find better videos on pyography. I do a little bit of that. And it's fun. But anyway, I'm going to do a little bit of airbrushing on this particular piece right here. The other piece, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, silver leafing with real silver leaf. And the uh, adhesive is drying right now, so I'll show you that. So back and forth and uh, let's move on. Well, I think we're at the end of this video. I think I've done about as much as I can. Anyway, I'll show you some pictures at the very end of the video of all the pieces I've been working on. And if you wanna skip to that and kinda of look at the end result, that'd be great. I consider lots of stuff I do an experiment now this piece I really like, and some of the elements on here, some of the different techniques I've applied, I know what to do for the next piece. This piece right here, eh, not so much, but it's okay. Um, I may never finish these and actually sell them. 
Okay, here is the second piece, pretty much completed. The other piece I really love. This piece I'm okay with. Uh, you know, you always have your favorites. I did a little bit of airbrushing in here, added a little bit more color. I thought it was a little bit uh, drab. I wanted that to pop a little bit more, and I think once I get a maybe a little bit of a shiny finish on that, I think that'll be a lot better. All right, so there we have it. Thank you so much for watching. Like my videos, please share them and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. I will talk to you next time. This is Sam in Wyoming. Yeah, yeah.